is AI able to listen to your keyboard? Researchers at Durham University trained an AI model to crack passwords by listening to keystrokes. Using a simple off-the-shelf shelf laptop and a smartphone, the team created a program, an AI program, that was 95% accurate at recognizing passwords. Joshua Harrison is a software development engineer and a lead researcher uh, on the study and joins uh, us now to explain what this means for the future uh, of cybersecurity. It's kind of a uh, diabolical, e even to test for it was kind of diabolical. So the iPhone microphone was used to listen to laptop keystrokes and AI can figure out what, what people were putting in as passwords. So you had to, I mean, are, are criminals as diabolical to figure this out, Joshua? Well, I think that's a, an interesting take to have on it. I would say that, first off, in terms of the ability to recognize passwords, uh, our model itself predicted, well, recognized the actual keys themselves with 95% accuracy. So if you apply that 95% accuracy to something like a password, the accuracy would go down kind of with that small bit of area error getting bigger each time. So for something like a, a password, it's probably not 95% accurate. Uh, but we did achieve 95% accuracy on recognizing individual keys just from the sounds uh, that they produced. And in terms of uh, testing for something like this to see if something like this is possible, I think an important angle to, to look at this from is that if people with bad intentions discover that something like this is possible, discover that they can, they can implement this in the real world, it's in their best interest that no one else on earth knows about it other than the people with those bad intentions, right? And so in any other field of research, you can pretty much guarantee that if someone discovers they can do something big, they will publish it because people like publishing. They want the information out there and it gets them attention and funding and things like that. But if people with bad intentions in cybersecurity get access to something like this, they, they desperately don't want people to know that this might be possible. And so coming at it as a, as a researcher, so when I was doing my master's at Durham, looking at this problem is more a case of, okay, do we think this is possible? If it is, then we need to kind of promote a conversation around this because essentially only the people who are looking at this from a purely academic angle are going to be the ones who can actually kind of bring this to the forefront of people's attention. Joshua, can you sort of walk through exactly what this entails, you know, using the the microphone on a smartphone, does the smartphone belong to the bad actor or does the smartphone belong to the person whose password is being hacked and is somehow hijacked? Um, and is this all via Zoom? Can this be done in person? I mean, what are sort of the limitations here? Sure. So the, the two pieces of data that we looked at uh, in the published study are keystroke sounds coming from a laptop with a phone placed next to it. And in this case, we're just recording the sounds on the phone itself. So we, we've not done anything to get into the phone. And yeah, as you put it, 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 it would in this case be the malactor's uh, property. So uh, think of someone sat next to you at a coffee shop, someone sitting next to you at a library, something like that, uh, with a phone just discreetly on the table next to them. It, it's not a very suspicious thing to do, especially that you can keep recording by locking the screen as well. Um, and so that was one data set, so recorded on a phone. And then the other one was recorded via a Zoom call. So just the built-in record function uh, on a Zoom meeting and then typing kind of recorded through that. And so, yeah, the, the two vectors of attack that we were looking at in this study are trying to classify keys from the sounds recorded on a phone next to the target's laptop, as well as the inbuilt record function uh, within like a, a video conferencing software. Oh, no, Joshua, is there a, a simple fix to this? I got this padded keyboard. My, I don't make any sounds when I'm, when I'm uh, typing. Won't that work? Can't I thwart these malactors just by, or get, if I get a really tight, high and tight mani-pedi where I have no, uh, <laughs> if I have no fingernails at all clicking? Joshua? Sure. Uh, well, I would say that we don't know for certain what makes the keys sound different. Uh, so this was an AI model that we used, I a see. deep learning model. So it, yeah, it's and not so the loud really clicking, it's, it's the time between clicks that could indicate locations no, on the um, keyboard. So yeah, we, we have wow. a good idea based on some previous work uh, and some of our results yeah. that <laughs> positional location on the keyboard is probably the main indicator of the different sounds. So if you think of a drum, if you hit different parts of a drum, it makes different noises, right? Near the edge, near the middle. And so when you have this like metal plate with a plastic plate on top and these four like legs underneath connected to the desk, 
where you hit makes a, a different noise, which might not sound different to you, but it, it's not actually anything to do with the fingers touching them or the the, the fingernails pressing the keys. Um, but in I terms of, of, of thwarting this, sorry, just to go back to your original yeah. question, yeah. Um, there are a bunch of different ways you can do that. The, the easiest one are things like fingerprints to put in passwords or facial recognition, where you're not even typing anything, right? Um, but that doesn't remove that obstacle of, well, what if someone's not looking for your password? What if someone's looking for documents that you're typing, like, say, at the library, in the coffee shop, things like that, or emails? Um, so passwords are what we focus on, but but we'll remove those for now. If you just want to to try and make this harder uh, as you're typing on, for example, your your very soft keyboard, um, that is a great way of doing this. The, the more different types of keyboards we have out there, the more general these kinds of attacks would have to be to work successfully. So that's definitely one thing. And the other thing is just typing style. Um, everyone will type slightly differently. We've proved that a, a model like this can recognize the sounds from the keys, uh, but those sounds might change depending on different ways people are typing uh, or who's typing and, and things like that. So Josh, I'm curious, what makes this doable because of AI? It seems like this would have been doable prior to AI. Sure, so we're, we're kind of not saying with this paper that AI is the only way of doing this. So there has been research on this topic in the past, quite a good amount of research, but it's very far apart. And so very few of the papers use the same approaches multiple times in a row. And we were the first paper to specifically look at laptop keyboards and then apply AI models, deep learning models, uh, to the sounds that we were gathering. And machine learning had been used for this in the past, but maybe not to the same extent or the same focus or to the same level that we were using it here. And the main point that we got out of that is that, uh, yes, there have been great results in the past on this, 91%, uh, 93%, uh, but by using very much off-the-shelf kit with a limited amount of data, uh, we were able to surpass those accuracy measurements using deep learning. So it's it's kind of proving that, hey, deep learning is actually really good at this.